great. Thank you, Leonard, and thank you to the speaker, and because I think it really sets the stage in talking about um, this campaign and the origins. Um, I've been involved in many campaigns throughout my career, and I think that um, when we began, the idea was to try something new. And we didn't know if it was going to work, um, but we recognized that we really needed to be able to put uh, the campaign into the hands of the migrants and put them in the driver's seat. Um, so what, what I want to do is start by giving a bit of an overview of the campaign itself and talking you through the design. Um, as a bit of background, um, I wanted to talk about IOM uh, role in voluntary return. So since January 2018, IOM has uh, supported over 15,000 migrants in returning to their countries of origin. Uh, the vast majority of those are coming from the detention centers in Libya. And we know from the news reports the conditions that are there and the conditions that many of them met along the way. Uh, but an important thing to keep in mind is that returning home isn't always easy. Uh, in particular, uh, returnees, when they come back to their communities, oftentimes they face um, obstacles uh, to reintegration. You have to put their code in. There's a code. A lot of this is related to, uh, uh, to stigma and, and discrimination uh, that they encounter in the communities when they came when they come. Four back. two five one seven three. If anyone needs the code for uh, the webinar, <laughs> um, I think that, that in particular, um, the challenge is that many of them, uh, the communities had such high expectations for these people when they left and often have pulled together the resources from the community to send this bright young person uh, to make their fortune. So oftentimes when they return to their communities, uh, they're, they're ostracized and they lack opportunities. So this is where migrants as messengers, uh, as we designed the campaign, we wanted to, to take a new approach. We wanted to uh, both be able to raise awareness, but also to combat the stigma that so many of the returnees face when they're returning to their communities. Um, and so the, the approach that we took is peer-to-peer -peer messaging, recognizing, um, as the speakers before me said, that we as IOM or as governments here in, in Europe, uh, we are not the ones to be sharing the messages and telling people what to do or what not to do, when in fact it's their peers, their communities, uh, their friends and loved ones that they trust the most and have the um, most reliable understanding of the information shared. So our goal within the campaign was to capture and be able to share these really candid, authentic, and, and powerful testimonies of the returnees um, through the, the campaign. So the way that we wanted uh, to design it was very much taking a uh, participatory approach, making sure that the migrants themselves were in the driver's seat and were shaping uh, the campaign, rather than us coming in with our, uh, here's our plan, here's our key messages, but they themselves, uh, through workshops, were able to identify what are the messages that they wanted to share with their communities. Um, and it was really fascinating as the returnees came together to discuss their experiences, the, the networks and the community that they found uh, in these groups of, uh, they're called VFOs, so Volunteer Field Officers. Um, and in fact, one of the outcomes that we didn't, we didn't write into a project document, we didn't expect, was the psychosocial support that the returnees found as they came together. Rather than being isolated, um, feeling like, oh, I've come home dejected and, and my family um, is disappointed in me, but they really found support uh, within one another in these communities that they developed through the campaign. Um, and so how are we going to capture these stories? This was the question. Uh, everyone had a powerful story to tell, but um, we needed a way to uh, leverage the, the mobile technology that we all carry around in our pockets, that we have in our bags, 
um, and turn them into uh, community journalists. So this was an aim from the beginning of the campaign to be able to uh, conduct the interviews through using uh, mobile technology, easy video capture, and then allow them to be able to use their social media networks as well. So it wasn't necessarily messaging coming from us. Um, and in fact, through the process, we got a lot of inputs in terms of developing the, the mobile technology that was used in the project. Um, and the, the key for, for us was um, a mobile toolkit that we developed called Community Response App. And essentially what, um, what it does is it allows for migrants to be able to respond to a series of questions uh, in a very candid way and be able to use those uh, answers to share their stories. And we trained them um, using smartphone kits so a small tripod, an external mic, and uh, they were able to take on the role of a community journalist and in interviewing one another. Uh, one of the key things that I'd like to reiterate is that uh, informed consent was critical in all of the activities that we did. And so the uh, community response app also integrates a, a digital consent form. So before we would take uh, photos or start interviewing the returnees, that it was shared with them uh, the project and the campaign and how the stories would be used. And as, uh, as the returnees went out into the field, we started getting a whole catalog of, uh, of really powerful testimonies, stories of return um, that I think were honest to a level that we would never have been able to do if you or I walked into that returnee's home. Um, the, their willingness to share and the, the authenticity of those stories um, showed how, how genuine uh, the, the stories were and I think it, that led to the credibility of the campaign in a real way. And also, um, in addition to the, the return, the returnees talked about the hope that they had. Many of them were starting new businesses. In fact, through this project, quite a number of uh, returnee associations have been formed. Um, my colleague, Mamadou, will speak more to that. Uh, but I think that it gave the, the returnees more and more purpose. And uh, these stories of hope were also really powerful for this campaign. As they collected stories, we saw kind of a transformation. Uh, rather than feeling dejected and ostracized, they became more confident, and they became advocates, saying, I don't want my brothers and my sisters to experience what I did. And um, over the, the process of the project, um, the, they became much more outspoken and more willing to, to share their stories. Uh, one of the key aspects of the campaign, in addition to the town halls, which we'll be speaking about for the impact evaluation, was the social media. Uh, as we know, all of us are regularly on our social media feeds. But one critical component is that the, uh, the campaign itself was organic. So the spread was not uh, boosted, we're not paying Facebook to, to send out these messages, but it was through the returnees leveraging their own networks that the messages went um, quite widespread in the communities of origin. Um, and so when we compiled the numbers, we saw that Leonard suggested 1,000 videos. There were actually over 5,000 videos across the countries uh, where the campaign was implemented. Um, though a minority of returnees are female, we made a concerted effort to make sure that they were part of this campaign um, in the countries where it was implemented. And the, the VFOs, um, 
in fact, we had imagined a smaller number of uh, volunteer field officers, but we got regular requests for people to join the, this community of returnees that were capturing stories. And so it continued to grow. And now, in phase two, um, it will expand to seven countries. So the original project is in three countries. The next phase will be in seven countries. Uh, in terms of impact, well, that I'll leave to the experts to talk about. Um, and I think that um, there's a, a great video. We'll share the link on the webinar. I don't think we're going to be able to play it at this time. Um, but now I'd like to pass it over to my colleague, Mohamedou, who's going to talk more about the first-hand experiences in the world. Thank you for introducing me here. It's not easy to speak after you. <laughs> well, uh, coming to me first of all to speak on behalf of IA Senegal, and thank you for inviting us in this event. Every project we implement, every activity we carry out is a learning opportunity for us, and migrants as messengers have been a great experience that gave room for improvement in the planning and implementation of other awareness ways activities. This being said, I would like to share with you our experience working with involuntary field officers of both vehicles, as Amy Shek said. Personally, I was tasked to conduct the selection process. So it was quite an easy task because we were receiving requests from the returning migrants to join the program. And I was suggesting to the migrants. Yeah, you. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah. Thank you. We're asking them to meet their maximum. Maybe. Okay. If you are hearing us, please uh, mute your mic. Okay. And I also took part in the training of the volunteers. Um, they had we, as Em said, we did not uh, outline messages to be spread out to the. Um, said by the volunteers, but they had their own messages to help them, give gave them the tools to go outside and um, conduct peer-to-peer -peer interviews and uh, testimonies. Um, I also had in charge to uh, the coordination and monitoring of their field work, so I can say that I know each one of them pretty well. And I can tell you that I saw the transformation that Amy was talking about a while ago. In the beginning, at their return, I saw them when they felt uh, exhausted, which is my next slide. I did not forget about the PowerPoint. Yes, I saw them at the airport when they felt exhausted. This happened, worried certainly about the reaction of their families and that feeling of failure. And later on, I uh, saw them gain more self confidence, rebuild their self esteem become influencers and change makers in their communities. In the beginning, they would shy away from the camera, not wanting to appear in public, but later on they would take initiatives, conduct peer-to-peer -peer interviews, and uh, facilitate crowded events. Um, may I precise that I started with IOM, at IOM with the migrants as messengers, and it was hard only for me to see that the activities we are doing the project we are implementing is having a real effect on the returning migrants. And yes, um, the migrants, as Benny said, um, underwent a series of trainings. But before getting to that, I would like to share with you the to introduce you to one of our volunteers. His name is uh, Ismail Baji. I'll tell you why I chose him. Ismail Baji is a 29 years old returning migrant who dropped his studies at the university level and uh, tried to migrate to Europe. On his way to Libya in the desert, uh, his convoy was attacked by highway robbers and they were stripped of all their belongings, left with little or nothing. Nevertheless, Baji managed to reach Libya, where unfortunately he fell in bad hands once again and was captured and imprisoned. 
In 2017, with the support of IOM, Baji returned to Casamance, to his village in the south of Senegal. Here is what he believed is his story. But Baji said that despite his fears, his family was very supportive and very welcoming. But, but he did not feel the same because he felt ashamed as if he failed them because they invested a lot of money in his trip, they contributed. So returning like this is a sort of betrayal. Him. He couldn't go out and spend all his days in Rose, enjoying only the company of uh, two of his friends um, who would advise him, who would um, um, take him out from time to time and make him realize that finally it was, uh, as he said, the uh, end of the world. Um, I would like to say that this is the story of one of our volunteers, but uh, the volunteers might take the same roles, they might endure the same challenges, but each of the story is unique and specific on its own. So if you allow me, I would like to play... I forgot about my PowerPoint. <laughs> this is Baji Ismaila that I introduced to you a while ago. And I would like to play the two short video clips one is Adam Madalo, he is a Russian migrant, he's talking about his experience in Libya. And the second one is the 17 years old Russian uh, migrant, uh, Amadou Jallo, who is talking about his family welcome, welcoming him at his return. So I'll let you watch him. Meet. They, 
the um, pressure they feel when they come home and um, all the stress they are going through. Um, to help them uh, value the, the experience and share their stories, we gave them a, set of, um, a series of trainings to in public speaking and to help them improve their leadership potential and foster their entrepreneurship. So they conducted, um, uh, I gave them presented the month kit, so they conducted peer-to-peer -to -peer interviews with the community response app. They facilitated the debate and they engaged with media, working with people who live the same experience. In fact, I gave them a platform of exchange where they can share and speak to people who can relate, people who live the same experience. And this served as a sort of therapy because it was not easy in the beginning for them to, to search deep down of their experience and speak it out. So the fact of getting together between peers, between people who share the same history almost, it helped them um, improve and um, feel better socially. So after the trainings, they were now ready to go outside and uh, uh, engage with media. As you are seeing in this picture, we received uh, uh, media, they are talking on radio, they are interviewed by written press, they are interviewed on TV by local and international media. Uh, these pictures were taken during the International Migrants Day, um, which was uh, the framework also of GMFF, General Migration Film Festival. So you see the VFO's uh, interview on the past sequence, and on the other picture you see them um, doing the testimony in front of uh, actually a big crowd. Um, now, I would like to talk a bit about the uh, impact evaluation. I will not go deep down in the technical space, which is up to, to the you guys. So, um, I would like just to highlight the participation of the volunteers to the impact evaluation. Before we start the impact evaluation, the MAM volunteers were conveyed or invited to a, uh, to a meeting, to a workshop, where they brainstormed on how to facilitate the debates. Actually, the questions they were asking to the participants during the, during the impact evaluation were drafted and was uh, chosen by themselves. They are the ones who prepared the questions and also they contributed to the one video that we screened during the impact evaluation. Um, the impact evaluation went uh, in this format. We had screenings, we had debates that were facilitated by the volunteers, and we had after the evaluation. Now, this is the experience that very, <laughs> very not be comfortable with. It is, uh, a good and a bad memory. The first test day of the, of the impact evaluation, I remember when we were leaving the office, we were all excited and we were placing pets even. I, I was the most hopeful one, I was expecting hundreds and more people. But when we arrived at the venue, we found that uh, it was not the number we, we were expecting actually. And we had to, we were so disappointed, we had to watch the office and try to find the right formula to fix it which we did, fortunately. But uh, um, imagine during uh, that, that first day, among the few people that attended that screen, one of them was just a week away from, from traveling, from taking the road. He, has his, he had his trip already planned, and he was just a week away from, from going. And after watching the movie and listening to the volunteers, he instantly changed his mind and said that he is not taking the risk. Um, this is not an isolated case. This is the same reaction we have all over the impact evaluation process. And this is the impact, the real impact that migrants as messengers is heavy on the communities. So in the second phase, we hope to target more people and impact more lives. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Slight change in uh, the agenda. We're going to do the coffee break now. Very short one, just 10 minutes, and then jump into uh, presenting the results of the report. Okay. So, uh, quick break.